<laughs> hey, everybody, welcome to AI Powered Mockup Magic. It's wow, you are so punctual, Jeremy. It's one. It's one p.m. on the East Coast. Therefore, yeah, let's, let's do it. About, let's do it. We're going to talk about prototyping landing pages with Chat GPT and Midjourney. What yeah. are those? You might wonder. What are those, Andrew? I don't know. What are the What are these things? What are those things? Landing pages. <laughs> <laughs> What is ChatGPT and Midjourney, Jeremy? We're going to find out. Okay, good. good. Um, we're definitely going to find out. So, without any further silliness, some housekeeping. We're going to be doing this demo for um, roughly forty-five minutes, and then we'll open open the the, uh, the program to questions and hopefully answers. Um, and I think if you have questions, please put them into the chat. So a couple things should, about- uh, Sorry, we should yeah. mention that uh, this is the second time we have done this live. If for some reason you were at the last one and maybe just want to hear our voices again, this is the a repeat, an encore presentation of the original live stream. So just in case, if you uh, yeah. were expecting new content, this is the same. It's going to be roughly the same. Yeah. Who can tell? Who can tell? That's it's true. a live stream. This is true. <laughs> Although uh, at this point, based on this slide, it's going to be exactly the same because the <laughs> things the things we're going to be covering are the same thing. So we'll do a brief overview of large language models, otherwise known as LLMs. Um, we're going to show you an approach to including artificial intelligence tools uh, in your design workflow. Um, we're going to show you specifically how chat GPT and mid journey can be used for making mockups very quickly. Uh, and we'll be sharing with you some of the strategies that we've used um, with both tools to get um, results that are closer to what we were looking for. Um, in summary, and basically why is it that we're here doing this and why you're there listening is that we did a deep dive into chat GPT. Um, 3.5 specifically, um, and a handful of other AI-related tools so that you don't have to. Um, we've um, uncovered the um, strengths and the shortcomings, uh, and we'll be sharing those with you. So, uh, yeah, and I guess we'll be sharing the shortcomings <laughs> in a subsequent uh, presentation or live stream that we'll refer to as the warts and all. Um, but let's uh, talk about LLMs, large language models. Jeremy, do you want to you want to take the yeah, helm? Absolutely. So uh, yeah, if you go to the next slide, because you'll be driving. So one of the things that uh, again, this is, we're starting from ground zero here, just to make sure that you know you probably have heard of ChatGPT and AI, and we just want to make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. So LLMs, large language models, the way these work at the most high level is uh, through auto-completion, so predicting the most likely way to complete a string of text. Very similar to what you'll see on this next slide, which is that auto-complete on your phone that suggests the next word. In this case, the word messages seems to be the most likely. So in many ways, that's really all it is. But if we dive down just a little bit deeper, uh, one way to think of it is this is how LLMs brains work because they do have brains right Andrew We're, we want to make sure that um, well we said think in finger <laughs> quotes so I don't know if we, then if we need to say brains and finger quotes too but <laughs> since I mean let's go with that okay so the way it works again or the way it thinks is that if you give uh, one of these LLMs a partial sentence like I really like French it's going to try to find the most likely next word in this case fries what are the chances of that being the next word? Very high. And another one might be movies. Okay. So Yeah, it's pretty high. Pretty high likelihood. I bet you more people like French fries than French movies. We should do a poll next time. We'll yeah. do an interactive poll in this live stream. Yeah, that'd be cool. I really like French movie. movie. Singular. So again, the likelihood that that is accurate or correct is pretty low. Although if you really like a French movie, right, then it would be higher. 
See, as we'll find out, those distinctions are important. Yeah. However, I really like French, the, the likelihood that the, that is the, the next possible word is very low. And finally, I really like French R. Almost impossible. No, it's, those, can, those combination of words are very seldom found in any sentence. So what's unique about ChatGPT and other systems is something that we just want to kind of talk about briefly, because obviously it's been getting a lot of buzz. This is not the first time I'm guessing you've heard about these terms. However, it's worth kind of contrasting conventional software that you were used to as uh, programmed by humans, right? Explicit step-by-step -step instructions, and that's the software that we use on our machines. In contrast, ChatGPT and other LLMs use what's called a neural network. And what's key about this is the training. How does it learn how to do this stuff? I will talk a little bit about that in the next slide, which I'm going to give back to Andrew. Uh, you want me to talk about this now? Yeah, sure. OK. So what's an LLM, you're probably wondering? Uh, so you could always ask it, um, but um, LLMs are advanced computer programs and they use artificial intelligence to understand queries and to generate human-like language. I want you to think about that phrase though, human-like. Um, LLMs are trained by uh, ingesting massive, massive terms, text from books and articles, um, scouring the internet, looking at marketing content, websites, the like. And part of the training is it learns to understand the relationships between these words. But just like the example that we just stepped through with the I like French movies, um, it's, uh, it doesn't really know what a French movie is. It just knows that French is quite often followed by movies in the context of that sentence. And so they use this knowledge, and this is a case where we should probably put finger quotes around knowledge, but they use these patterns to predict and generate text based on the input they receive. So a GPT is a subset of, or a type of large language model. It stands for generative pre-trained transformer. And I'll just break down what that really means. So generative meaning they create new content. It's not a search engine that's spitting back existing content. It's generating from scratch new content. It's pre-trained in the sense that it's been trained for a very specific job. Apart from the large language model that connects the words to each other, a GPT will have specific models attached to it that either allow it to do things like interpret code or write code, create images, uh, recognize images, and so forth. And they're transformers in that they understand the context and relationships between the language and the models that they've been trained on. Transformers, you say? <laughs> yeah, much more than meets the eye. I think I think we need it better. We should use Mid Journey or something to make a transformer next time. But this is the legit toy. So our scenario for today, Jeremy, I want you to describe so, this scenario. What we talked about is when we explored this, Andrew and I, we um, went down a lot of different paths, and we ended up um, talking about the fact that we want to look at the way a designer and perhaps designer who has just started a new job, a new gig, what have you, um, they have entered a new environment, a new work environment of some sort, and they're being asked to do a project. And as we know, that first week, sometimes longer, um, you know, you're trying to figure stuff out. You're trying to learn the business model, perhaps, of the company. You're trying to soak in all of this information. And so the scenario that we decided on was a web designer or UX designer, however you want to uh, frame that, who has been given a project, and we'll show you some of the specific visuals in a second, of creating two different landing pages. And these are prototypes. And we want to stress that, and we'll stress that a few times throughout this 
But this would be an example of the uh, existing product page for this company, which is a e-bike manufacturing company. And as you can see here, their existing web page and marketing is very, very product based. There's a lot of details about the specifications of the bike and all of those nitty gritty kind of geeky details that sure speak a lot to the characteristics of the bicycle, um, but not a lot about the intended audience. So we actually chose two audiences or in this scenario, the designer has been given the task of creating prototypes for two different audiences, the first being college students, and the second being uh, an older generation, which we're, for, for, for brevity, are calling retirees. And we'll talk a little bit about the details of that in a second. But essentially, the job is to learn a little bit about e-bikes marketing towards these two um, demographics and then creating some mock-up pages. And we'll talk about the details of these in just a second. Uh, yep. So, oh, my mistake. Yeah. So, the uh, it's your first day on the job and you arrive and the onboarding is um, a coffee mug and uh, you're told that the creative director has left on vacation, the content strategist has left on vacation, but there's a scribbled down note. We're focusing on lifestyle marketing. We want to see two prototypes, really simple, very like start with a very simple wireframe idea like this, which is not a particularly compelling idea, but still, this is our wireframe. And fairness, we could do that in Figma and say, and change the hero text to say like, insert hero text here, or lorem ipsum, et cetera, et cetera. But I think what we want to do is show you how we can take this up a step um, and, um, uh, uh, op open the possibilities of getting to the really interesting design stuff once we've got real content, or at least real looking content. So I do want to just stress, we're making mockups. We're not working on production uh, content. We're not working on production final art or anything like that. These are sketches. They're disposable, part of the mockup, um, and prototyping process is to work rapidly um, and efficiently. So, as all designers, uh, uh, as all good designers do, um, they start off a project by researching and trying to understand what it is that they're trying to uh, address, what design problem they're solving. And it would be simple enough to get started by trying to ask the, the larger question, uh, what are the important considerations when marketing any products to college students? And this is a way to get context. And of course, you've probably done searches like this where you find after, after you've done the search, you find a page or a destination that looks like it's gonna have plenty of information. And then you find yourself scrolling deeper and deeper and it's much deeper and much further than you really needed to go. And so, um, yeah. for example, like certainly I'm sure that there are answers in that. We're not trying to become instant marketing professionals. We're trying to get a start, just some ideas. And so uh, is there a quicker way to get some ideas? So let's start with our first prompt for ChatGPT. Um, Jeremy, you can go, go ahead and um, uh, share your screen. And we're going to ask that same question that we to Google. And one thing that's worth pointing out is whenever we look at tools that are AI generated, uh, in, a, in this realm of AI um, tools, the question that we always ask is, do we get results that are better, quicker, or more accessible, more accurate than doing the same thing if we ask a standard search query send it, um, submitted to Google or Bing or uh, wherever you would normally search DuckDuckGo? Um, and the other question then is when it comes to imagery, uh, isn't it easier just to search for stock photos and can we find a stock photo? So um, rather than having to figure out like how to make the images look less weird. 
Um, so that's the question that we always ask. We submitted the same question to ChatGPT quite simply. What are the three most important considerations when marketing products to college students? So again, what we wanted, <clears throat> what you'd want to invite, invite you to do is to compare kind of this result, the summary that gives these three nice bullet points or numbered points compared to those results that we saw in Google, just a standard search engine, which again is going to ask you to take the time to sort through the content and perhaps filter out some bias and figure out where is the source coming from. And again, not to say that this wouldn't have bias because for sure uh, LLMs have their own version of bias, which we can talk about. But what we see here is, is a nice summary. And what we want to do is quickly, we're not going to read the whole thing, but it's going to talk about things like college students. So relevance and value. College students are often on a tight budget and have specific needs related to their lives. Okay. Sounds about right. Digital presence and engagement. College students are digital natives and highly active on social media platforms. And then personalization and customization. College students value personalized experiences. Okay. So again, you can make those arguments that sure, this applies to a lot of demographics, but if we look at some of the details, you can see that these seem about right. And this is gonna give us the um, confidence to kind of move to the next section. Right. So the next the next query that we would ask is, I mean, I'd be curious. We know something about marketing to college students. Is there something specific about e-bikes that we need to to consider when marketing um, those to college students? And so we're going to ask ChatGPT the same question. And um, again, this is some of this is just our feeling our way through this, which is, did did it pass the um, the so called sniff test? Did we see um, uh, did we see results that made sense to us when we looked? And sure, there were no outlandish statements about marketing to college students. And so now let's see where this result fits in with that. So go ahead, Jeremy, and I think you can take over there. Yep. Okay, so we're going to take the next prompt. What are the three most important considerations considerations when marketing e-bikes to college students? So again, more specific question than the last one. We'll go ahead and trigger that. Again, it comes out in a similar format because we specified we wanted three, which is nice. And it gives us, again, we're not going to read the whole thing, but affordability and cost efficiency is number one. Convenience and sustainability, number two. Versatility and lifestyle integration, number three. And we can, again, dig down and read some of these details um, and just, again, as Andrew was saying, like, does this kind of match our limited understanding of this? So emphasize features such as built-in storage options, USB charging ports, ability to carry backpacks or groceries. Yeah, okay, all of that seems very logical, convenience and sustainability. So the uh, environmental benefits of using e-bikes as a sustainable alternative to traditional. Okay, all of these sound really good. And... I think we feel confident enough that we're going to keep going on this track and begin to use these for our uh, mock-up. Yeah. So, uh, if you're taking taking notes at home, um, consider this idea of ChatGPT giving us guidance when it passes that sniff test, and that it may be faster and more concise than doing the doing it the old-fashioned way, searching searching for it in Google. So the, there's an overlay, right, where we have the ideas about marketing, the th important important things to consider about marketing and marketing e-bikes in particular. And when we overlay them, we get these three themes that sort of make sense to us that we think that we're going to explore further. The one is the affordability and value. The other is earth friendliness or sustainability. And then this third one is practicality. And I know that these seem to be very general terms, but the good thing is that it gives us a starting point. Um, and uh, just about yeah. a, of the demo, just for a second, too, or just to talk about the fact that, um, again, some of the pre-work with this, Andrew and I have done these queries and prompts uh, many different times in different fashions to get to this point. And one thing that we're doing, obviously, we're doing this live, which is always a little <laughs> dangerous as a former software presenter. It's always a little bit interesting when that happens. But 
we know that in general, the results seem to be roughly the same. Sometimes you do get some wild cards, but for the most part, all of this really does seem to kind of group together in these similar categories when you're using the same prompt, which is something, again, we've done a dozen different times before this. Yeah, exactly. So at this point, we're going to use this understanding that we have, um, our newfound knowledge about marketing and marketing e-bikes, and we're going to use it to generate some some copy for our wireframe so that we're not stuck in lorem ipsum world where our design can actually have a concept and a message, uh, a, a, a theme, an approach, something that's more than just a diagram of Latin uh, and gray boxes. And so the task here is to generate an intro paragraph for our hero. And it's gonna tie all those three values together, the value for friendliness and practicality. So our prompt um, is to write a paragraph of copy for an e-bike that is targeted at an audience of college students that focuses on the value, earth friendliness, and practicality of the product. We're just going to say to ChatGPT, do that. And mm -hmm. introducing the perfect ride for the modern college adventure, the Eco Cruise e bike. Andrew Eco Cruise e bike. Where did it come up with that? Now well, let's get back to that. Say goodbye to parking headaches, gas expenses, and rush hour stress. It's not just a mode of transportation, it's a lifestyle upgrade. So again, a quick scan of this. I'm not going to read the whole thing. First of all, it does seem pretty long for hero copy. And then there is this really nagging flaw with the fact that it just made up the name Eco Cruise e bike. <laughs> so that is that that that's a little bit of a dilemma. In fairness, though, um, it did it did give us some really interesting phrases. Uh, and so even if we were to just copy and paste a handful of those phrases, um, they, they, they're, um, the language is, is fresh, it's interesting, you know, no more waiting for the bus, like, that's cool. So here's an important takeaway, and that is, by definition, large language models fabricate. The and job they hallucinate. We yeah. I we have problems with the term hallucinations because it's really it's not as if um, it's an imagining anything. It's just making it up. It's, it's all imagined though. It's all being made up. And yeah. I think that the the idea of calling it a hallucination suggests that it's this random quark. Right. Um, it's that it's but it's not. It's mostly hallucination. And on occasion, yeah it'll have some truth anyway but that's fine because again in the scope of what we're looking for it works perfectly we won't place all the copy so <laughs> we're refining the prompt and this is part of the approach that we that um that we want to sort of reinforce for you and that is that when you when you do a query when you when you when you uh, submit a prompt look at what you're getting and if it's not exactly what you're looking for, ask again and refine it. So in this case, if we were to rephrase the prompt to address what our concerns are, we could, first of all, it was kind of long. So let's say write 30 words or less of copy for an e-bike named eCoast. So now we're talk, telling it the name of the product. Don't lie, don't make up a name. We've retained the targeted audience we've retained the focus that we want to that we want the content to take and we've added um uh, the tone which is that we want it to be a humorous casual and personal tone which is a stylistic adjustment so we're going to take that and we're going to put that in and submit mm -hmm. ditch the parking puzzle high five rush hour Ecoast e bike, your pocket wow. friendly, earth loving sidekick. Zoom around, campus, guilt free parking tickets. We won't miss you. Okay, so so to be honest, right? We've we've run these queries a number of times, <laughs> and when 
the only place where we get the most amount of creativity and the differences between what we're seeing is with this query in particular, this prompt, which is just, you never know when you're going to get or what you're going to get. And so one thing that we'll point out now, and this is as good a place as any to do this, because we knew we would hit this at some point. Um, if at any point you get something that seems off or you're just not super happy, there is a regenerate button down here, which I'm going to click now. And that's going to go ahead and essentially rerun that prompt. And they try to learn with these language learning models. So after you regenerate, it's going to say, hey, is this better or worse? I don't know yet. I haven't read it. I'm going to close it. But uh, <laughs> it says this one is ditch the parking drama and pedal with pizzazz. BD coaster, snazzy campus cruiser. That's as earth friendly as your favorite coffee shop order. That's, well, I don't know. It's my coffee shop order, Earth family. But anyway, zip, zoom, and save the planet one ride at a time. Emojis. Wow, it gave us emojis. Hey, let's. So. Yeah. Okay, teachable moment, Jeremy. Um, we're we're in this chat. We we've got a relationship going with the robot behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, let's let's have it do it again, and let's have it do it with as many emojis as it can think to do. As possible, I guess. I don't know. As much as possible. Yeah, so now we're just having fun. Um, I think if I put an exclamation point, it will actually help. Like I don't know. Fun. But I think that, that, that so we are having fun. But there is a valuable lesson here. And that is that in the context of the thing, of this uh, chat that we're having, that we can say do it again with as many emojis and it knows what we mean by saying do it again so it actually is pretty pretty interesting uh again it gave us four emojis but it actually used them in the context of the sentence so yeah. save money and high five the earth um, that's right it's like a sustainable dance party on wheels uh, oh, wow that's so conceptually that's so mind bending a sustainable dance party on wheels I, I don't think we could ever use that no but i mean if we were to you know if we were to make it, it we could coerce it into something more usable certainly but and as, yeah and as andrew mentioned before we have now these three i mean yes this one has more emojis but really we now have three examples and just to point out one user interface piece the first one that we did with these two options, you can cycle between these by clicking one and two, and, and we'll show you both of those. So again, uh, given our context and for what we're, we're doing it for in this scenario, like you would choose the one perhaps that is the best. Uh, if you had a little more time, maybe you would kind of cobble together, you know, two sentences that combine the best of those multiple prompts. But we need to do more, much more. Oh yeah, we need to take this to the next level. So, so let's have it create the detailed copy for each of those three sections that we want to break out. So we want a we want a bunch of words about the value, a bunch of words about the practicality, and a bunch of words about the sustainability and earth friendliness. So, um, again. Jeremy, you're going to you're in the context of that conversation. So we'll see what happens because we've already taken it down the emoji path. So when we say do that again, yep, that means emojis. Something. It means we'll something. Out. Well, that's our guess. Based on our experience, we're still going to get some emojis, but let's find out. Oh yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, but this time it says again, Ecoast, your campus joy ride awaits. Cut parking costs. Embrace eco fabulous vibes and cruise wow. with flair. The price tag, just a fraction of the savings you'll score. Invest smart, ride smooth. Okay. So it, it's funny that it it sort of still brings in some of that practicality. It's still stuck on like, I want to talk about all of them, but the focus is on the value. So that's good. Yeah. We'll do it again, focus on the practicality. Do it again, focus on the sustainability. Okay. And we probably need a call to action. So the practicality is uh, beat campus traffic, hug those wallet woes goodbye, and eco boost your journey. Practicality meets fun with each pedal. Okay. So again, yeah, the emojis are there. Um, 
Actually, you know what? I don't know if we've ever told it to remove the emojis. Let me want to just try that. Hmm. No emojis. No on. emojis. No emojis. Yeah. Oh, see. Okay. The sustainable campus companion navigate congestion free, embrace a greener commute, and invest in the earth. It feels place. like it's lost the tone, though, right? Yeah. So again, this uh, these are some of the you know for. for for those who are real, like if you're a marketing guru and you're trying to fine tune your content, these are the sort of details you definitely want to pay attention to. And um, we'll talk about some strategies that we have when you really go off the rails a little bit later. But for now, I feel like we're still kind of right, right in between those rails. But yeah, it does feel like we, we maybe lost a little bit of the, uh, the humorous tone. Yeah. So uh, let's do. Uh, let's make it come up with a call to action. Let's say take a test, take a test ride. So we'd have a button that would probably go to the locator dealer or something like that. We want to get people riding these bikes. Okay. So I'll say write a call to action to find a local dealer to take a test ride. Ready to experience the eco's difference. Sweet. Take a test ride today at your nearest dealer and feel the eco-friendly thrill firsthand. Embrace practicality with a touch of sustainability. Find your Just a touch. Find your local. <laughs> I don't know. So it's, it seems like maybe it's not really convinced that this yeah. is all that sustainable, probably because of the landfills that would be filled with the batteries of the discarded ones. Yeah. Anyway, less important is that we now have we, we have a wireframe that's actually got content. And even if you're just skimming and scanning, it suddenly looks like a landing page that's promoting a product, that's promoting a lifestyle, uh, and it's got real content, and it's not Laura Mipsum. It's still gray boxes, but that's all right. It's a wireframe, um, and and we'll, we'll get there. So just to re a recap is, that we did our prompts to figure out what the considerate marketing considerations are for the audience. We had to generate hero copy. We had to generate three paragraphs of body copy. We adjusted the tone. We adjusted the the uh, number of words to generate. We adjusted how, the density of emojis, uh, and we created a call to action. Uh, we did all of that, and we did it kind of quickly, right? We were explaining it to you, and as we're going through this, and we're showing you some of our Pratfalls and so forth, but we've got we've come up with marketing copy for our wireframe in really a few minutes. Yeah, if we, uh, if we removed all our explanation and so forth, it really probably would be about five minutes, right? Maybe maybe ten, depending on your yeah, you're refilling your coffee cup and so forth. Hey, but we've got another audience that we need to do a wireframe for, um, and so we'll use we could use similar prompts actually. Um, we could just go through the exact same drudgery, and instead of saying an audience of college students, we could say an audience of retirees. But maybe did we learn something <laughs> uh, by going through it? And of course, the answer is yes, we did. Um, spoiler alert: yes. Um, we we can refine and develop a new prompting strategy based on what we learned from the first round. And presumably, the more you do this, the better you'll get at getting to this point, which is the yes. So here's a big idea. The more context that you bring to the prompt, the better the results tend to be. There's an asterisk, just like all of those people who scored home run derbies and whatever, but they were all juiced on steroids and they've got the asterisk. There's the asterisk, better, because what does better mean, right? We know that we can't really rely on these models to generate factual <laughs> truth, but they can generate fantastic human-like language. So what is better? Better doesn't mean more accurate because it doesn't mean it's more factually correct. Better means that it fits our needs better. So that we knew that we wanted a you know dummy copy that had a focus on a certain concept that made it better by adding that context um there are a number of places where you can add more context to get more uh, to get results that are closer to what it is that you're looking for just please don't assume it's accurate so here is our prompt this is a super prompt a mega prompt a, a maximo prompt this is the turbocharged prompt you've been waiting for. 
and we're going to break it down for you. We're going to break it down because it's too much to read. Okay, the first part. Jeremy, you want to handle this? Yeah. So I'll just ask you to toggle as we go. Yeah, ahead. just say. So what we it. did here, again, this is the first paragraph. And the first thing we did, if you can go ahead and just toggle, is we gave it a more specific role that we want the AI to play. In this case, an award-winning advertising copywriter. So again, uh, you see variations of this if you've studied chat GPT prompting at any level. Like the one of the more famous ones is kind of like, you know, explain this as if, you know, I was a five-year-old or whatever. Uh, but in this case, again, we're asking it to to take the role of a award-winning advertising copywriter. How much difference does it make? It's hard to know, but we're going to put it in there. And then the next piece of context that we put in is we, we want it specifically to create copy for two marketing landing pages. So again, we're trying to roll things up and, and speed things along here. Um, and then the last piece is the intended audience. So again, we're switching gears. We're using a similar prompt, but we're talking about an audience of retirees. And what does that mean? Let's go ahead and look at the next prompt. So again, one of the things that we wanted to make sure we, we've referenced this slightly, but again, uh, that chat GPT and these LLMs tend to have these mm -hmm. memories. So they kind of hold on to the things that you um, that you tell it to. And in this case, again, we're, we say we're using that moniker. Well, what moniker? Well, the word retirees to describe a demographic group of 60 to 85 year old men and women who are financially able to retire and enjoy their leisure. So this is more context. This is more information. And then we're also being sensitive to, again, like painting this with too wide a brush and, and we want it to exclude or limit some specific language. In this case, please do not use the words retire, retirement, or retiree. And then the third section, let's go ahead and toggle. So in this case, we're saying that um, we're giving it these um, kind of specifiers or these adjectives, uh, safety, stability, and quality, price conscious. If you could toggle the next. Yep. So we're, we're essentially accentuating, want it to accentuate these values. And we're tweaking the copy a little bit. We're asking it to be friendly, trustworthy, and encouraging. So yeah, again, so yeah, it's not that different, right? What we did yeah. before, it's just that it's putting it only to one big question. We're not going to say now do it for the price consciousness, now do it for the stability and safety, now do it for practicality and range, and do do it all. So with the um, a one and done, um, ideally. So here's a good best practice, Jeremy. We're starting with a brand new audience. We're starting with like a brand new thing. It's yep. sort of similar because it's still the same bike and whatever, but do we start a new chat? Do we start from the beginning and like wipe the slate clean? Or do we say, okay, you've gotten us this far with your clunky, weird emoji laden copy about college students. Now let's shift gears. What's the and best it, practice? Yeah, and the, the answer is we're going to start from scratch because um, what we want to do is copy this. Um, so what we want to do is actually let me just put this in. Take all of this because I want to be sensitive to what you can see on the screen. So again, instead of continuing this existing chat, which we we saw from the emoji example, might we're we're starting to kind of diverge and add some some not so good randomness. So what we're going to do is go to the top left corner here and click new chat. And we're just going to start a brand new thread again with that entire three paragraph mega. Maximum. None of the baggage, none of the emojis. And as we do some pretty remarkable stuff kind of emerges. Hey, so there were two things that are important to notice. One is we said we're making copy for landing pages, marketing landing pages. It knows what a marketing landing page is. Yeah, and it even gives us things like the image in brackets with 
maybe a little alt tag text or maybe some description that we could use as a caption or maybe some hints as to what sort of image we could use later on when we're looking for the imagery. So it, it knows a lot. And again, as we spoke at the beginning, um, these LLMs were trained to, uh, with lots of stuff, including thousands and thousands of web pages that include marketing copy. <laughs> Think of how many pages have marketing, like all of them, basically, you can make an argument that, I mean, well, maybe not all of them, but many uh, commercial uh, web pages have marketing copy and it's, it's incorporated all of these into some of its content. And there's a lot of it. We're not by any means going to go through here. I would recommend for you a best practice is to, yeah, like read all this, scan it, make sure that um, A, it didn't invent some new stuff. Everything looks okay, but the fact that it gave us these um, breakdowns, again, we can just look at one of these, you know, empowering your journey, upholding your independence. Okay. Uh, that's some pretty powerful, uh, pretty powerful messaging there to resonate with an audience. So Jeremy, one other thing that it's, that's worth pointing out is that it gave us two versions of this, right? And it also, it also captured the concept, right? So this is landing page number two, redefine your outdoor pursuits. Now that's a tagline, right? That's describing this particular pitch. And if you scroll up to the first one, conceptually, it's your pathway to unbound exploration. I mean, these, these words and these phrases are so evocative. It's a really great starting point. And especially if your content strategist isn't, uh, you know, in the office for a week and you don't have that sort of guidance or someone who knows what language is on on brand or uh, you know the right tone for the for the uh, for the brand right um we just tell to do it again in old english oh you, why not <laughs> we're going off the rails folks again because we can because we're embracing the randomness jeremy Turns out uh, when you went on the lunch break that your company did a pivot. They're now working <laughs> at Renaissance fairs and selling e-bikes. Uh, Could you imagine jousting on an e-bike at a Renaissance fair? And it's like, fulfill thine independent oh, streak. So obviously we're having fun, but this is just, uh, these are one of the things that, you know, kind of keep you, keep you, uh, intrigued and interested in in this stuff because it can do it as we just saw and it can do it pretty quickly hey so one thing before we switch uh to to the next uh, the next step in this adventure is um so when you mention you you post the question like how much difference does it make when you say you're an award-winning advertising copywriter as opposed to you're a copywriter versus saying there's no rule at all i'm just giving you a query um write these words that the, there is a difference in the flavor of the language that gets generated and so um you could you could actually ask right now like um why would it why does it sound different if i set the context of you being an, an advertising an award-winning advertising copywriter and my guess is the response will be as an award-winning advertising copywriter, I'm using language that is more dynamic and more flashy and more brand-laden than if you had said you're a technical writer working for a stodgy textbook company, right? Yeah. Yeah. And in a, yeah, and I think in our future presentation, we're actually going to give you some of some of those tips where we're um, going to ask it to, to basically pull back the curtain a little bit and explain these results. We're kind of taking these at face value without really digging in, but the truth is you can ask ChatGPT and these LLMs to explain their answers a little bit as Andrew pointed out. But um, given yeah, our- But time, meanwhile, Jeremy, uh, yeah, a matter sure. of minutes and we've got two landing pages, um, wireframes that look like I mean, they've got section headings that look like they resonate. They're words that are better than Laura Mipsum. Uh, let, let's let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do the next thing. So, the, um, let's recap though some strategies that we used for our prompting. 
And these are things that you should definitely ex experience, ex experiment with and exercise your skills with. But we specified the tone and the voice and we said humorous, friendly, casual, personal, you can do anything you can even do oldie Englishy. Um, okay, we gave it some limits, which were the length of the content. So do it in 30 words, do it in 40 words, 45 words. We gave it other limits with excluding certain terms. So we said the word retirement. One of the other, so in our sketching this out, we also discovered that if we wanted to talk about wellness, um, and we said like, you know, talk about the benefit, the wellness benefits of, of having one of these bikes, that it kept using words like wellness <laughs> endlessly. And so um, that just sem seemed a little bit clumsy. And so excluding some of those words can be helpful. We also showed you how we regenerated the answers and got another shake of the dice. Um, and uh, we took advantage of having the memory of the context of that chat, but we also took advantage of being able to wipe that memory clean and start anew. Um, and learning from the process to develop your own super prompting strategy. There are a million ways to improve the results of what you're getting. Um, anyway, let's paint those wireframes, Jeremy. Let's fill them up with some images. Let's show you around how you use Midjourney to make some images that are better than stock. Okay. And again, remember, that's what we're trying to do, right? What happens when you search for these things in a stock photo yep. album? The exactly. So when when what uh, we're going to talk about here is Midjourney and Image Generator, I'm going to whip through the basics of it. But again, just to take a step back, this is all of our content so far, at least a, a kind of version of it. And it's looking much better than that Laura Mipsum, but yes, a hero image and uh, three separate images would be really good. So Midjourney, uh, this is a, a, a generative AI program, or it's an image generator. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm tabbing, and you should be tabbing through the slides. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I think I took over again, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, um, nope. No. Sorry. Resume presented. I, I got it, sorry. Yeah, all right. Now we got it, right? So I'm on the Midjourney slide. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, so Midjourney is a um, program that is very similar in some ways to ChatGPT in that you give it a text prompt, except that it gives you images instead. And again, we're not going to dive into exactly how this works, but similar in a similar way, it's not as if there's a big database of images and that Midjourney is like mashing them up and mixing them up and doing some behind the scenes magic. It uses this fairly complicated mathematical process uh, called a diffusion model. And that essentially removes image noise to result in a final picture. And it's kind of mind bending, but it really starts at the left with just random noise and almost like a sculpture where you have a big block of granite, you start chipping away or it starts removing all the stuff that doesn't make sense. And in the end, you get a nice picture of in this case, the Eiffel Tower. So it's removing noise, which again is kind of a mind-bending concept. And it can do a lot more. Uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about these details, but for now, we wanna create eight images. So one hero plus three images for college students, one hero plus three image for our retiree audience. And we give it a prompt. So in this case, a photograph of a 19-year-old smiling female college student riding a white e-bike through a college campus during spring. And then what's this little weird text at the end? So this is syntax that tells us or tells Midjourney that we want a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So A, R aspect ratio. And that's convenient because maybe that matches our hero image uh, aspect ratio. So we'll go ahead. And again, we're not actually gonna do this live. These are some pre-canned results. And boy, oh boy, we get some four, at first glance, pretty interesting images um, from a photorealistic quality. They definitely could compete with stock imagery and in a much faster version. Too bad it's the wrong bike. Yeah, it's the wrong bike. And so, and it's even more noticeable when you upscale it. And you can see it kind of looks more like my Schwinn from 1985 or whatever. Um, and it, 
again, yeah, I know we're just doing a prototype, but remember it's your first week on the job. Like, do you really want to leave yourself open to uh, insult and injury by like presenting this? And they're like, no, just use one of our bikes. So that would be really nice to do. Hey, guess what? You can. So Midjourney uh, will allow you to essentially remix or combine prompts and images. Now, of course, you need an image to begin with for it to do so. The good news is if you're a web designer, you probably have a pretty good idea on how to steal image URLs or copy them. So if you right click on an image such as the one on the website, and then you copy that image address or you open it in a new tab or what have you, then you've got a URL like the one at the bottom that demonstrates that you want to use this image. And you would just add that to the beginning of your prompt. And just like we did before, you might as well add anything else that you feel like maybe you want to point it towards. In this case, it didn't really show the whole bike in those first images. So let's make sure it's using a full shot. The white cherry blossoms or whatever those were, like, OK, they were cool, but maybe just like some green trees. And we're designers. So maybe complementary colors would be nice to have. And here's the result. So a couple of weird things happen here. Well, first of all, let's just say it kind of nailed the bike for sure, or at least some version of it, much better than it was in the past. And so this is pretty remarkable. That allows you to remix existing images with a prompt, and it will somehow combine them. Having said that, it also created some other problems, which tends to be what happens a lot of times. You solve one problem, and it creates others. So in this case, we start looking closely, like some of those details feel off. So again, we can always rerun things. So in this case, the woman is on the left side of the bike. She's not actually riding the bike. It's a new way of riding, side, side saddle cycling. So again, at this point, you could kind of just regenerate. And in real time, this does not take very long. It takes perhaps, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute, depending on um, the server speed and so forth. But basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to find one that is like good enough. And we'll take a we'll take this one and say, you know what? For our hero image, this shows a bike that is very, very similar to the e-coast, and it, it's going to do the job. So let's just whip through the other prompts. So in this case, we would like a smiling male multicultural college student riding a white e-bike through heavy city traffic with some cars driving on the road. Uh, this last little piece here is, is um, something I've discovered over time that using these terms, evocative expression, detailed facial features, this seems to be like a little bit of a hack or uh, kind of it, it juices the results a little bit to, to give you slightly better facial expressions and details. So feel free to use that. Uh, otherwise, it looks pretty darn good. So we'll go to the next one. Female college student waving her hand while riding a white e-bike on a college campus. Uh, Andrew and I ran these and yeah, and then, you know, in some cases they were waving her hand. She's not really waving her hand. I mean, she is, I guess. It's the peace sign. But we actually liked it better. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, you know what? This is better than our... I shudder to think what it might have done if we said making a peace sign. Yeah. You know, or something. Yeah. So... So it worked. And that's cool. And then the last one, again, just like our old English shenanigans and whatever, we had some fun with this one. Photograph of a 22-year-old smiling male college student wearing a hippie poncho and walking his white e-bike on a college campus quad while waving to a group of college students playing hacky sack and guitars in the background. Now, it had ignored all of, I mean, and he's not waving. Are they playing hacky sack and guitars in the background? I don't know. It's out of focus. Honestly, it just made us laugh and it <laughs> did the job. <laughs> Only because we've been on college campuses. Yeah. We lived on college campuses where there was a dude in a hippie poncho riding a bike by the hacky sack guitar. Yeah. And our director of technology, Roman, did point out like that his proportions are not good. His legs are kind of weird and short. But again, we're not using this for production. It's good enough for our mock-up. I think he would drag his knuckles if he walked. <laughs> it's possible. I don't want to see him walking. That would just. But well, that's why it's lucky he's got the e-bike. Yeah. So in the <laughs> exactly in in the end, uh, this is a version of our mock-up and. Compared to our lorem ipsum blank one that we started at, and again, 
we know that this has been roughly 45 minutes of us talking about this, but if this was a designer sitting down here and going through this process, my best guess is within 10 or 15 minutes, you could kind of get to this point. And the ultimate takeaway from this is that because it's so fast and easy, you're doing two things. You're learning more about this product. You're learning more about the business that you're now kind of diving into. And you're getting to the fun stuff, which is like design, typography, type, layout, color, all that cool stuff that designers love to do. You're getting to that faster. You're getting this drudge work, or at least kind of that this part out of the way first. And you're really kind of doing two things at once. So, um, and you get to the fun part, right? Like this is yeah. where, so if you go to the next slide, I think we did it like, uh, or maybe not. Yeah, I don't, I think this actually, but, is the next slide. Yep. but the, the, this is where you can start to explore different layouts. Now you don't need to be stuck in the layer cake, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, design and you can think about a, a, you know, I don't know, a horizontally scrolling experience. You can, you can put things, you can change the order of these things. You can make all sorts of adjustments. The one last thing I want to mention, um, just for context, Jeremy, before we jump to questions, if there are any, and that is that in your prompts, in the mid journey prompts, there were a couple of things that you specified, which, you know, it seemed to come out of the thin air. And I just wanted to, to reiterate where some of those things came from. And that was in the, so if you if you jump back to the actually the first the first prompt, because um, I think this is kind of cool. So the that weird URL that's what Midjourney does when you offer it a, an actual yeah. uh, URL. It, it does a shortening of it and it pr produces that. But in this case, so you knew that we we knew that we wanted a smiling female college student and we wanted her to be riding the bike through a college campus, and that was the first prompt that we ran. And the resulting images, for whatever reason, when you say college campus, it says it's got to be New England fall because all the trees were orange and red and brown. And for whatever reason, you decided that that was the wrong the yeah. wrong look. And as the designer, you get to decide. You're the you know you, you're orchestrating the way that it's going to look, and that's why you then added during spring. Yeah, that's when we started getting just huge amounts of cherry blossoms and exactly. you know weeping cherry uh, um, willows and whatever and it's like that's too much we yeah, wanted right. some green in the background and that's where that came from and the full shot part was important too because a lot of the images were lopping off yep um the the heads so yeah, the mid journey uh, in the image generation kind of has its own you know kind of its equal amount of learning curve as the chat gpt stuff that we did um and so in, in many cases, but, but again, they both kind of share these similar features or uh, similar attributes, which is like, and I, and I hinted at it previously in that when you solve one thing, it kind of goes down another path that creates other issues. And so there's this, a lot of correcting and excluding and limiting that happens. And I think one of the takeaways um, here is that, you know, we're giving you some of these tips, um, but, the only way to really get up to speed is just to do this yourself. And I think the takeaway that we would have is, is um, like, don't be afraid to regenerate prompts. Don't be afraid to start new prompts. Um, try to get out of that mindset that you do, you have with, with typical software, what I call traditional software that's programmed, where, yeah, you're trying to figure out where to, to live inside those limits. But this is something different. This is like, and that's why we said embrace that randomness, uh, because the truth is it, that is where the gold is often, is, is letting it um, kind of go slightly off the rails or, or into this realm of unpredictability. And then you can take the stuff that you find useful. So do we have any questions? That is a question. Any questions? Yeah. I do not know. Anyone watching the chat? Yes, no. We're 
right? Well, well, if we don't, uh, then I would like to just jump to the part where I detoured you, and I apologize for doing that. Oh, cool. Um, but we did the same. We did the same series of prompts, discovery for our image for our uh, in quotes retirees, um, and I think the. I'm per personally, I love I love these results. Um, <laughs> it seems like we had better luck getting the right number of limbs, fingers, uh, the legs on the appropriate sides of the bike frame, and so forth. Um, and so these images are really good. And I think that the, you know, like we we did that sort of drudgery to get to the point where it was like now we don't have gray boxes to move around on a screen now we don't have Laura Mipsum to move around on the screen and to quote our design lead Justin design is a conversation and this is how you can foster that conversation you show this now to your stakeholders and you can get much better responses about the concepts the ideas the approach than you could with Laura Mipsum and gray boxes um, but I'm sure that I'm preaching to the proverbial choir with a statement like that. Cool. Yes, thank you for following up on that. For some reason, I thought we'd hit the end, but we had more. And there's always more. Speaking of more, we will be doing, again, a sequel at some point where we talk about the dark side and the dangerous side of uh, LLMs and where you should really pay attention to things like, I don't know, pesky facts and double triple quadruple check and then only then quintuple check sextuple yeah. check don't ever stop checking the results yeah that will be the title perhaps of our, of our <laughs> next trust project. no one tldr yeah check everything it's tldr cya well thanks to uh, those who watched and we look forward to uh taking you down this path yeah in a future presentation adios